the Egyptian, they, they had the hieroglyphics, they could write. Mm -hmm. We couldn't write them. That was the only way we could write. And that, so those things were kept then. Like that. And they, they were, had meaning. They had meaning to us. Mm -hmm. That is why we say when the British removed those things, it, it took like part of our history. Yanking away chapters of our mm. history. So how do we want to share the message of that history? How do we want to enlighten our children that this is our history? This yeah. dates back to 18th century. Because when you go to British Museum, another museum around the world, and you see some of those things, or oh, 1806, 1892, mm -hmm. you begin to think, wow, somebody did this so many years then, ago. What about yeah. the ones we have? Why are we not showcasing them so that our children will know that we were not just a bunch of barbarians who didn't know how to do anything? Prince, but, especially since some of them have been posting on the internet, what's all the fuss? Isn't it just an idol? They were not idols. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, those who now are reacting, saying, describing them as such, are the people who do not now see the need to keep those things the way they are. Now, we, as I told you, they were records of our history. I'll give you a recent example. During the Oba's coronation in 1979, the present Oba here, my brother, uh, you have seen his regalia, coronation regalia. And there was one particular item that uh, escaped the British uh, looters. That one was there. He had finished dressing. They didn't know where to place that particular item in his uh, regalia. So they saw the bronze cast of that very thing, one of them. And they went to it and looked at it. And they saw on that very bronze cast that item they were talking about. So they knew where to, to place, place it. it. That was done. And now we know how to read, we know how to write. So we don't need to keep our records by bronzes and casting mm -hmm. bronzes. So that's why it is. The ones in the British Museum and everywhere else, they are kept clean, they kept they invest a lot of money protecting them in the museums and so on. But because it's an investment to them, they are making a lot of money getting people, tourist attraction getting people to go there. If you get to the British Museum or any museum in the world, the section where the Bini works are kept, uh, usually you find it's almost the largest part. Premium interest. Mm. Yes. So that's why they have and to invest to keep it clear about that. And so what the ones we have here, are we taking advantage in that sense by encouraging people to come to the Obers Palace to see some of them? We don't really have a museum now in the Obers Palace. Even the, at that time, there was no museum in the Obers Palace. They were just on altars, on sacred places, and so on. And mm -hmm. nobody, of course, got to them. They were not worshipped. Mm -hmm. They were not idols. They were just there. And people recognize them as us. The bells, for instance, all the all the all the all the altars in Benin had bells, and they used the bells yes. to invoke the gods, the, the, the ancestors. Any time we were going to communicate or commune with them. Okay. They Does that still happen? Yeah, we still have ancestral worship in the name. Okay. Yeah, we, we, have, we recognize our ancestors, mm -hmm. just as the modern people, the Christians, also recognize theirs. The saints you will talk about in, in the Holy Book are people's ancestors. Okay. okay. Now, now, Dr. Walker, um, how true is it that you have found some other grandchildren of some other soldiers who were involved in that looting and you're, you're actually on a campaign to get them to return those things. Perhaps 
that's slightly overstating the case. Okay, all right. We haven't found grandchildren, but we've found some evidence that um, uh, property taken from, that might have been taken from Benin, was uh, um, passed on by the uh, descendants of one of the officers involved. I can't remember the name of it. To, um, to, and given to Essex University. Oh. Um, and uh, it's quite possible that that, that is a Benin bronze. So we want to chase that up and, and see if we can persuade the Essex to uh, repatriate. So is this looking like um, life ambition inspired to make sure that you bring it all back? Um, I don't mind being an example to others, but yes. uh, I've got lots of other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but when you look at how people felt, the government of Edo State, the Oba and the Prince and the number of other people from here, how they feel, how happy they are that you turn it, how do you feel on the inside? Wrong feeling? Or? Um, Indeed, uh, I'm almost overwhelmed. I, I, I did expect some enthusiasm when, when I came, but I had no idea there would be this level of um, enthusiasm. I was greeted after the presentation yesterday by men, women and children of all ages, um, from, from the very young to the very old, who all wanted to shake my hand and to tell me how important how grateful. they thought. Um, this action was. Mm -hmm. Clearly some people are absolutely convinced that it is that, that um, Benin is the proper place for the Benin bronzes, which date back hundreds of years to the 14th, 15th century. Oh. Oh. Okay, so, uh, well, as we wrap up, let's come back home to Benin. Uh, I know most of the time people will say that don't mix tradition and uh, the monarch with politics but the politics of Benin as it begins to get heated with what is going on in the state assembly is there any thoughts on your side what's your thought well I think the other exemplified this a few I think a week ago or whatever, he invited all the politicians, all the politicians around in town, different parties, to the palace, and he talked to them, allowed them to go and shake their, their swords so, and then mind the uh, business of governance in the name. Well, uh, I. I'm a traditional ruler, I'm not a partisan politician. But as a traditional ruler, my opinion, uh, same as that of other traditional rulers in Benin and in fact in the whole state, we have seen uh, the governance of the present government as something quite positive. Uh, we've seen that the government today is doing what has never been done in this state ever since. And we're all quite happy and we are quite in support because as traditional rulers in this place, if people are hungry, if they're sick, they cry to us. They don't even cry to the government yeah. because the government is transient. He's there, the governor, the president, everybody's there for maybe four years, eight years, and they're gone. We are there perpetually uh, for our people. So it's to all they cry and say this is what is really happening. But therefore, when any traditional ruler sees anybody, any man, a woman who is doing for our people, trying to relieve the sufferings of our people, trying to make them feel satisfied and happy. We are happy. We regard such uh, a person as a friend of the people. And that's our own regard today. 
about our present governor in Edo State. Because he came here and we saw it was there on the ground what he did in this place. In two years, first two years, he did here in this state what was never done in the previous government for eight, for 10 or 12 years, eight, 8 or 10 years. Nothing like that was done. So we're quite happy. And, well, don't it need, people do ask questions like we're asking now, and people have to answer. But without even asking questions, if you could ask the roads, if you could ask the schools, if you could ask the health centers in town, you say, look, how are you now? <laughs> if they could talk, they would tell you, look, we never had it so good. Okay. So, now, um, I'd like to say that the Oba has spoken. Yes. So we are expecting some kind of resolution to the matter that is happening because um, the, the, the importance of the Oba of Benin cannot be overstated. When he speaks, he is obeyed. Thank you very much for coming. Um, Prince Edu Akenzua, Enogi of Obazua, Obazua yeah. and uh, Dr. Adrian Mark Walker, who did the unprecedented, found stuff belonging to Nigeria, to the Bini Kingdom, and actually took the initiative and returned them. I'd like to say on behalf of the people of Benin and the people of Nigeria, thank you very much, Dr. Adrian, and thank you for coming on Sunrise this morning. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure. Sunrise will